Hey guys, this is Devin here with Hillbilly Networks again. Today I'm going to show you how to do a mid span. Um, I've talked about that in previous videos, um, but today I'm actually going to do that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get in here and get started. I will list all the tools I use in my video uh, as I have in previous ones. pricey though so I will give you an alternative which is what most uh, people I work with use um, I prefer something different right. I'm cut these zip ties away here Let's see if we can get in there a little closer Seven and forty-eight. So, so we can get these out without making a mess. So brown tube there. I'm dealing with one forty-four count cables. So uh, I'm looking for a brown tube, which I believe I have found it. Let's see here, sub seven. Yep, that's it. Sub seven. Okay. This is a tail end here, um, so this is not the mid span. And I might be wrong, I may not be doing a mid span today. Thought I was. Find out here in a few minutes when I go to the other side. Span is actually already out, but it may not be as nice as it looks because it looks like it's not out all the way. Looks like somebody got it out partially. And that's gonna suck if that's true. Hope I'm just seeing it wrong. And if that is not the case, mid spans can be very fun if somebody didn't initially. Um, do the original ring cut mid span properly on the whole cable. Can make them a lot of fun. Uh, basically, you're supposed to measure out. There's a certain, there's a proper way to a mid span. Um, a lot of fiber things, there's all kinds of different ways. But in terms of a mid span, there actually is a proper way to do it. And it does not show in the instructions that you get the closures gives you some measurements and whatnot, but uh, one thing that you do in a mid span is you count the turns in the helical pattern. Um, the cables have a helical pattern, um, as you can see here. Um, every so often those turn the other direction. 
So if you did a mid spin, you had a, a U shape of cable hanging out here, and you cut that out, you're gonna wanna make sure you have three of those turns on this side and three of those turns on that side, or two of those turns on that side and two of those turns on that side, and one right in the middle here. I'm sorry, one, yeah, one right in the middle here. Um, you do that, then it unravels properly. You don't do that, then you're gonna end up with, when you go to unravel that one tube, it's gonna unravel one side more than it will the other. And that is what happened in this case. And well, unfortunately, once that's been done and there's a bunch of cables on top of it, it becomes very, very difficult to attempt to fix it. And you, in many cases, will cause more problems by attempting to fix it. Um, I really want to fix it uh, and I'll look at this uh, but it's actually not a big deal they did a pretty decent job uh, most of the cables free what I need is free to be able to do it properly um, on my end what I'm putting in the basket and tray will land properly with how they they've got it so it, it actually works out okay it's not a big deal Basically what I'm going to do here is, hopefully you can see in that video, uh, I know it's hard to see this, I've got a U here, um, I'm trying to, it's very hard, it's a very long tube, so it's, it's very hard for me to get all this in the picture, especially without breaking it. There's no end, that's what a mid spin's called, there's no end in this, and I can't cut it, because there's customers on it. I need to access two fibers in there. Um, I don't need to access the other 11 because there's 12 fibers inside this buffer tube. So I use a special tool that I can actually slide along this and it removes that jacket without cutting through the fiber, hopefully. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't always work out that way. But, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna measure for one loop in my basket. And by that I mean, these two ends are coming straight out of cables on each side right here. One here, one here. I'm gonna take one of them, whichever one's gonna cooperate the most, and wrap it this direction, pull it over these trays, loop it behind this black part right here. And then, as you've seen in my previous videos, when you're anchoring them to the trays, it'll be there right here. So basically what I'm gonna do at this point is hopefully have a permanent marker on hand. Uh, but it's super busy today. Okay. So I've got that wrapped around neatly in the bottom basket. Come up here and I'm going to mark this cable with a permanent marker right above where I'm going to anchor. It tells me where I need to make the cut on that side. The neat thing is, it's the same distance to both sides. So, at this point, I just have to pull it straight out. Just fold these back up. There's a little red clip on these, pop down, and that allows that to stay up, hopefully. A lot of hopefully in a lot of this stuff. Things don't always work the way you want them to um, in this line of work. Okay. Now I'm going to try to get this out without breaking it. It's being a pain. Okay. So now that I've got them both out the same way as they were before, before I measured that, I'm going to pull these straight until I find my red mark, which I don't know if y'all can see that, but it's right there. Now, Take that same red marker, or black marker, whatever you prefer, and make a mark on the other two, same place. And you don't have to measure both sides. Sometimes it takes time to learn those things, but you don't. It's the same length both ways, so. Uh, I measured both sides many, many times before I realized, hey, I don't have to do that. Here's my tool. This thing costs about a grand. 
but it is worth every penny if you prefer not to break tubes here and there because some of the cheaper ones if you're dealing with an older cable that has a lot of memory in it you don't heat it up you don't go through the process of getting all the bends and kinks out of it which is, can be a pain uh, this is a lifesaver so far knock on wood I've never broken any cable old kinked whatever not kinked but has memory in it or whatever um, it's called a ray cut tool um, you can actually buy these uh, I'll check on Amazon and see and I'll shoot a link in my video if I can find it if not uh, I know some other places that will sell it as well uh, Amazon's usually my go to for stuff though alright so this tool in my opinion the reason why I don't have issues with this um, it's simple. It's metal and it doesn't give. All those other tools are plastic and when you put pressure on something it puts pressure against it and that plastic gives and causes an inconsistency with the blade um, with the cut pattern and I think it causes it to um, shatter the tube as a result. It does shatter the tube. Uh, it definitely shatters the tube but uh, I think that's the reason. I think that's what the plastic gives. Um, these don't. And you can hear they kind of cramp down. Anyways, okay. Let me go ahead and get to it. We'll back that up a little bit. I need some room to work. Let's see here. That's our tail end of not the mid spin. Hey, hey man, stop pulling my tripod. Okay, alright. I'm telling you, let's wake a little tripod. It's gonna get thrown at me in a minute by that cable. Fiber, as delicate as it is, it can be a pain in the butt. It has a lot of, a lot of memory, a lot of bite to it. Um, in our network, we've actually had a train hit a fiber that was low hanging during an ice storm. Didn't take out the fiber literally broke five poles in that span ripped them sideways um, ripped the tangents off fiber was fine um, until somebody cut it because they thought it was not fun but stuff's really strong is my point so that, that's why it's a pain it's made to be strong uh, but it's not always pain once you get good techniques to figure out tricks here and there Okay, so all I'm going to do for this mid spin is I'm going to come here on my mark that I made and uh, make sure I've got the right 3.0. Okay, there's a little blade in here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you that up close. The tube's going to land. I'm trying to get this thing to focus, it's not cooperating, so it's going to land inside here. And it's going to squeeze down and it's just going to slide down the tube. All right. So put that tube in there in that track. Clamp down. And pray. As always. actually going to take it is very uncomfortable in the beginning because you think you're going to break it so far again I can wood and never have doing this you're going to grab this back side what's uncomfortable about that is there's bare fiber in there now or fibers with coating lining there's no such thing as a bare fiber really uh, but that's what we call it anyways you're going to take that and you're going to pull on that side and use that to pull through until you get to your mark. It looks like I got a ways to go, unfortunately. Um, they left a lot of slack to go on a tray, which is actually a good thing. It's better to have too much than too little, definitely, when it comes to anything with fiber. Okay, you're gonna have to stop a couple times and look and try to find your mark because it bounces around. Helps if you actually mark all the way around it, but okay. I'm gonna 
take this, lift it up, and slide over. And, oh my gosh. Okay. I thought that fiber was caught right against the blade. That would have sucked. Alright, now I have the part that is stripped off. I'm going to make sure there's no fiber there. I'm going to snip it off. Come to the other side. And do the same thing there. Go all the way down to my red mark. You can actually take it once you grab it. There's no fiber. Take it and bend it back. Let you be able to see if you're cut better. two different pieces of upper tube after you strip that. You got one that is stripped off, basically just a, an edge cut piece that cut away. Um, that's what I cut the first time. And then you've got the majority of the tube that's still attached. Nobody else really likes to use it, and I don't want anybody messing it up because it's, like I said, cost about a grand. Um, yeah, when you're not paying for stuff, when your company's paying for stuff over time, you learn to appreciate, uh, even when it's not coming out of your wallet, uh, good tools to taking care of them because they make your life so much easier. For example, a good tool like that, I'm salaried, so that gets me a lot more time with my family where I don't have to end up working over because the mid span went bad and took a bunch of stuff down and now I've got to stay and fix it. Those situations. So, again, you learn to love tools. And uh, I do firmly believe tools make the job. tools in front of you, you tend to be able to work faster and more efficiently. Right now, uh, I know I showed you in previous videos, this is a string that's inside the buffer tube. Uh, all it does is simply attempt to absorb water, uh, block water, I guess is a better way to put it from traveling down the tube. Uh, water itself does not hurt fiber. Uh, it could cause loss and issues if it's in your splice, I guess. But uh, the fiber itself, it does not hurt it. It hurts it whenever it freezes. Uh, and then it expands inside the closure, inside the trays. And you got a big ice cube that has shattered tubes and fibers. That's never fun, uh, especially if you know, I have a nice trailer here I'm working in, but I've had situations where I couldn't really get the trailer in the area, uh, so I had to work on the side of the road uh, with my feet going numb, literally. I was standing in the snow. But again, that's what I said tools make the job. You, know, you have good good boots, good uh, can warmers, foot warmers, they make all kinds of special socks and whatnot to be able to do that. It makes all that stuff a whole lot easier. Um, and I do have that kind of stuff, but didn't have it that day. Alright, 
that is how you do a mid span. Uh